Okay, so I'm recording and this is a summary of this design sprint. So we've got our working document where we have, um, look at this, um, good stuff here, um, where we basically, what we did today was take a look at the power cube. We broke it down into all its modules and got people to, these are all the modules here on page four of the working document. And then we just got on to downloading pictures and specifications and drawing these out in FreeCAD. So yeah, that's pretty good. We've got the pump, uh, CAD, initial done. Uh, Joseph's got the complete engine by now, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and uh, Abe's got, Io's got part of the coupler, um, a lot of the coupler. Emmanuel's got the frame pretty much in decent shape. We've got that already, which you see here with the holes for the hydraulic fittings. And then we still need the breather filler on top, but that's pretty good. Uh, if you could add all the fittings in there, that would be great. Where on the bottom of the hydraulic reservoir, you've got a hose bar because the hose is going to connect to that. And then there's going to be a shutoff, just a valve. Because imagine we want to take take power cubes on, on and off from this reservoir. We have to seal it off. We have to have a valve down there so that it doesn't leak out when you turn it off. So actually the valve could go like right into the reservoir and be, be a turn off right at the reservoir. But you don't really want that because then the entire length of the hose itself would be filled with fluid. And anytime you took the power cube off, you would leak out all that fluid within the hose. So what you want to do is put the valve actually on the end of the hose, which is going to connect into the, the hydraulic pump. Okay, uh, coupler mounting. We didn't, yeah, coupler We've got that. We haven't done the engine mount yet. After we do, after we do the engine, we have we put the engine on the plate and mounted within the frame. So, Emmanuel, maybe um, a thing to do since you took over Ahmed's work, work on like after after you do this, maybe ha uh, email him or communicate to to do the engine mount, which would sit. Uh, put some mounting bars that you can sit the engine on top of this and things like that. Okay, um, continuing, so we've got the oil filter, not sure we've got the CAD yet, we got the fan, if you could paste in your, your CAD, you did the whole thing, that's great, if you can paste it in Alejandro, that would be great, uh, and here's the Roberto for the, the cooler, that's excellent, um, what else? I think that's about it. But yeah, we got a lot of the parts pretty much done. So then after we put the engine on, we can just play with the geometry as far as how everything fits. But that's a, that's great work. We got quite a bit done. So whoever is uh, still finishing this up, please do so. And then we'll we'll continue then, then at the next meeting on Tuesday. The only thing I want to point people for the Tuesday's meeting, the, the minutes are already up for that on the dev log. So if you go to development team log, there's the placeholder for next week's meeting and in it actually the the new comment i put forth was uh pretty soon we want to work out a tool chain for embedding webgl like three-dimensional images and we know that's doable um one of the other people on the team knows how to do that and he actually pre prepared a workflow so this is the august 8 document but if you go in there so this is the document itself there's a there's this thing there's a page in a tuesday august 8 document there's a webgl page and this is for the computer people here if we if we can develop a robust tool uh, workflow for getting good quality webgl out of freecad that would be great so far we've done it pretty well with sweet home 3d which is open source and we put whatever we do like the the three-dimensional house we can get decent webgl out of that but what if we use the Sweet Home 3D to import our machines in mesh format? I think OBJ, I think um, FreeCAD exports OBJ. You can put that into Sweet Home and then you can export it as, as WebGL. Now, why use Sweet Home? The, apparently, the WebGL export from FreeCAD itself is not too great. I think the, the Sweet Home version is better. So we can try that, but it's one of those things we really got to nail nail down, because if you saw, like for example, the universal axis, uh, universal CNC axis, what, what the 
that's a hallmark of what we can do with WebGL because here um, if you go to the Universal CNC Access page that is a full eight, uh, WebGL embed within this page which it takes just a little bit to load up but it's it's actually running off a different site but there's a workflow for that uh, and we can get that's Michelle who did that but we can ask them to to really school us in it's there's a bunch of steps involved there but we want to get that capacity within the team here as soon as possible so it's still loading up here uh, might take a little bit but the beautiful explosions well he's actually adding explosions to the webgl as well so he's doing exploded part diagrams on top of the webgl that's just one thing i want to get you guys thinking about that that's that's a thing we want to start looking into and really nail nail down because we want to embed all our 3d 3d manipulable things in our website and in the wiki as well to help people understand it okay beyond that uh any questions on today's um uh, design sprint anyone um have any issues any questions but yeah i think we did that's pretty good i mean we just went pretty far in a power cube just getting it getting a bunch of it done so any comments? Because if not, we can um, take it away for, for next Tuesday. No comments there. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, thank you, everyone. This was pretty good. We'll report on this on our Tuesday meeting. And once again, Tuesday, is going to, we're going to go noon for the tractor and 1 p.m. the regular meeting. So join us, and thanks a lot, and thanks for participating today. I think we got a whole bunch of work done. That's great. Thank you.